Hello and welcome to the Thursday, June 6, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Last few weeks, uh, probably even months, uh, there was a lot of uh, talk about various uh, brute force attack against different uh, firewalls. Add another one to the list. Oh, watch guard uh, VPN endpoints are uh, being attacked by brute force attacks. This is not a vulnerability necessarily in WatchGuard. This is just people throwing random username and passwords against uh, these uh, firewalls or really the VPN endpoint is what's uh, being attacked here. We have seen this, of course, often exploited by ransomware actors. There is one particular IP address that uh, I wrote about today that is very aggressively doing this. Also published uh, the passwords besides saw being used by this particular IP address. These are certainly not all of the ones they're trying. These are just the ones that I found in the sample in our honeypots. Also interesting, they're just trying two different usernames, Jason and Robert. Not really sure what's up with those usernames. Again, this may be a sampling issue here, but if anybody has any ideas, uh, let me know. A couple of weeks ago, Microsoft announced its new Windows Copilot Plus PCs and one of the featured features that's unique to these PCs is a recall. These PCs are all about machine learning and artificial intelligence. And what recall does is essentially the same thing your bash history does for the command line, but for the GUI. Recall will take periodic screenshots of your system, do optical character recognition on those screenshots, and then provide a searchable database of things that you typed and clicked on and, well, essentially things you interacted with on your system. The problem is that uh, the data being collected in doing so is not filtered, it's not obfuscated, it's just saved in a simple SQLite database on the user's PC. So Microsoft's argument was here, well, it's all stored on the user's device. There is nothing being sent to the cloud. In so far, you're pretty much as secure as you are for anything that you're doing on your own system. We often, of course, do have keystroke loggers and similar tools that will take screenshots and they can do this without and with a recall. The real difference with recall is that an attacker gains access to screenshots or the data from screenshots before the infection happened. So an attacker only needs a very small time window in order to gather data that was created, well, weeks and such before the infection happened. As so often, many vulnerabilities are sort of not really taken serious until we have a real exploit for it. And we have this now in the form of Total Recall. Now, Total Recall is not actually much of an exploit. All it does, it connects to the SQLite database that the data is being stored in and allows the user to read that data easily with a Python script. So this does not necessarily exploit a vulnerability per se, other than the fact that recall is installed and enabled, which is what you may consider the vulnerability here. And tools like this are also great to demonstrate the impact of vulnerabilities like this to show non-technical users what data can actually be gathered from this recall database. Best advice at this point, of course, is to disable recall so far, according to Microsoft's announcement, it will be enabled by default on PCs that support it. And Cisco in early May did fix a vulnerability in WebEx that actually allowed people to join meetings without knowing the password for the meeting. The exploit was pretty simple in this case. WebEx does offer the use of a phone instead of your computer to join a meeting. You are being prompted for a passcode in this case, but apparently if you just hit the pound key, you were let into the meeting anyway, without providing the pass key. Now, other 
participants in the meeting will still be able to see that you join. But of course, uh, this can be a little bit more difficult because you're joining from a phone. So only your phone number or partial phone number will be displayed. And it won't be that easy to identify who actually joined this particular meeting in particular in a long meeting. This was discovered uh, by a German security company after there were a couple of high profile compromises of uh, WebEx meetings. Now, Cisco states that the particular bug being identified here was not exploited in these uh, compromises. It may have been some other vulnerability. The company identifying this vulnerability, Netzbegründung, uh, did also identify that it's possible to, for example, get access to meeting lists and the like that, of course, then make it easier to join a particular meeting that may be of interest to the particular bad actor. It's always critical for meetings like this to keep an eye on who the participants are. It has happened many times before that credentials to meetings like this got leaked, not necessarily due to any fault of the platform being used, but just, for example, via exposed Google calendars and the like. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. Thanks for subscribing and for commenting on this podcast. And talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.